Welcome to the Fulfillment Project Podcast. I'm your host, Simply Sarah, and I'm so glad that we've connected here today. I've created a series called Life Chats. This is a four-part series of each of my amazing guests as I take you on a journey through their awakening process. My aim and goal for this show is to give you, the seeker, a container to explore your own growth as you awaken and step into more alignment, more joy, and more fulfillment every single day. Welcome back to Life Chats. We have Claudia here for part two. If you missed part one, please go back to the last episode and watch or listen to that. We went through her growth journey and growth cycles that she has been through. And I find it very interesting that we can always look back and be like, oh yeah, that was a growth cycle. That was a growth cycle. But now today we're going to talk about Claudia being in a growth cycle right now. And when you've had uh, many different cycles and you have that awareness, you can actually recognize when you're in them or when you're entering in them, which I think is so powerful. And I'm sure you can agree, Claudia. Absolutely. Like I was saying in part one, it's like now I can go through the whole cycle with a smile on my face, even when it's uncomfortable, because you're aware of it and you know what to expect. And you know that you're going to come out of it, you know, as a more evolved lessons learned and grown person. So definitely. And, And this is exactly why I created this series is to help people recognize going into growth cycles to be a little more easier on themselves, a little more softer on themselves and to recognize the the beautiful opportunity to be able to have more awareness and to be able to grow and not continue patterns um, Mm -hmm. like a lot of people can get uh, stuck into. And and so you're at the beginning of another growth cycle and Mm -hmm. just recap us on, we were talking about what a growth cycle meant to you in terms of like the framework and, and the sections of that. And so at the beginning of a growth cycle, What's happening right now that's making you recognize, okay, something's out of alignment and I need to have more awareness here. Mm -hmm. I feel that was me like probably six to eight weeks ago. Um, So I feel like I'm coming out of it. But what happened was that I felt like I was doing a lot, but everything seemed like forced. I was waking up in the morning. I was like, oh, I have to do this today. And I should be doing this today. And I had this specific target and in my head, I was doing all of the things, but kept being super far from this target. So it just felt uncomfortable, a lot of work for not a lot of results. And I kind of lost that spark and that passion within my, for me was within my business. Um, so that was the first like, uh oh, like there's change coming. There's a growth cycle coming. Um, so then I fell into like about two weeks of like, you know, the downward kind of spiral and just the awareness and the realizations and the conversations and the tears and the aha moments. And now like I'm slowly climbing up um, and finding myself getting more into alignment with the lessons that I learned while I was going through that first and second phase of the growth cycle. Yeah. And I think it's so important. And I wish someone had told me this years ago is that We are all growth focused beings. Not all of us decide to go on growth journeys, but those of us who listen to shows and podcasts like this, most likely run an own bit, run your own business, do personal development. You're so growth focused and you grow, you evolve, which means you're not the same person that you were six months, a year ago. Mm -hmm. And it's okay to be able to outgrow who you were. And I love that we're talking about business here because I can even see for myself over the years, staying too long in the in alignment because I didn't know what to do because I didn't recognize that it was a growth cycle. And what you were saying there with, you know, I was doing a lot and I felt like I wasn't getting a lot back. Like it felt hard. I was efforting. And those of us who run businesses can see ourselves go through different patterns of states of being or intention or focuses within our business. And I think like that's, that's such a key highlight red flag, like pay attention. If you're falling out of that, that spark and that zest and that enthusiasm for your business, Mm -hmm. it's a huge, huge, huge sign. Yeah. And so have you, let's, let's just chat about being out of alignment and not listening to that. What has happened in your life when you don't listen to those warning signs? Um, I feel burnt out. Like my energy gets drained a lot faster um, and I have great health habits. Like there's no reason why I wouldn't have energy on a day-to-day basis. So when I feel like my energy is getting lower and like, even like um, almost like more dense and like heavier, uh, that's a, that's a red flag for me. Um, What happens as well is that 
a task that would usually take me like half an hour ends up taking me like an hour. I get distracted. I do like multitasking. I do stuff just to feel that I'm busy, but it's not productive. Mm-hmm. Um, I try to work more and do more. So when I catch myself feeling guilty for not doing more, putting that pressure that I should be doing more, I'm like, no, no, no. Like, it's not about doing more and doing, 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 like go back to just being. Um, so there's some red flags for me when I get into that state. Yeah. I'm sure we'll open up into talking about, uh, inspired action, you know, mm-hmm. the 12 universal laws, the law of inspired action as high performing, high achieving women that we are and, and who I attract yeah. into my audiences. We know how to action. Like we know how to get shit yeah. done. We know how to make a plan. We know how to show up. And I remember even many times asking myself, like, why do I feel different showing up now than I did before? Or like, mm-hmm. I'm doing the same thing. Why do I not feel the same way? And there is such a big difference between actioning in alignment and out of alignment. Actioning mm-hmm. because I think I should, or I'm just supposed to, or actioning mm-hmm. out of inspired action. Absolutely. And you said something really key. That was the probably the biggest lesson for me within that growth cycle was it's okay to outgrow yourself and to show up as this new version of yourself. And that means your business will have to evolve and change with you as well. And for me, I was kind of like holding on to like, I've done it this way in the past for years and it had brought me results. But then I went into my marketing blitz and I was like, I lost my voice. I was literally reusing posts that I had written in the past just because I didn't feel, again, I wasn't like, the spark was in there to create content. I was like, I love coaching this program but like marketing, marketing it, it, that's hard to say, marketing it right now, um, just didn't feel like anything that I wanted to do. So I was like, because I was forcing myself to do and to still post, like, let's go back and reuse all content. Like, no wonder it wasn't clicking with my audience. I am not that person anymore. Yeah. yeah. But it was, it took, it took me a while to give myself permission. I think permission is huge. Um, to be okay with changing the way I promote this program and to talk about different things and to promote it differently. Yeah. And and I think that is the hard thing is to recognize, well, there's two aspects. Number one, recognize that something has to change. And number two, deciding that you're going to follow that recognition. Mm -hmm. Um, You know, I I can say for myself numerous times, recognized I was in the wrong relationship, knew I had to change. Uh Uh-oh, there's pain. You know, change requires you to shift around your life, different habits will come up. Maybe different people Mm -hmm. will, you know, come in and out of your life. You'll do different things. Like your life will change. And a lot of people get stuck in that scared mentality. Mm -hmm. And especially as business, you know, you rely on yourself for income, you know, this has worked in the past. So why would I maybe try something different? There Mm -hmm. is this, this, uh, strangling of fear that can almost come over us. Mm -hmm. You have to like literally let go of that strangulation because the stronger we hold on to it, the tighter we get, the more rigid, the worse we feel. And Mm -hmm. it's almost like, okay, let's just take a breath. Let's breathe. Let's release this. And then Mm -hmm. you're able to look at different options moving forward. Yeah. Yeah. And try it in a different way. And then, oh, that feels easier. And that still brought the result that I wanted to get, but the process was more aligned. And then you fall into, like you said, aligned inspired action. Yes. Which was a huge lesson learned for me. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Well, it's, it's recognizing that. And I mean, I had this aha moment like a year, maybe just over a year ago with like, I can feel joy every day. Mm -hmm. Like, and I, I realized how many areas I was denying myself joy because oh, I'll just do that in the future. Or I'll do that when this is done, or I'll do that then, or let me just get through this. And then I can have this. And it was this aha moment of like, Whoa, like, everything I'm experiencing right now, I have created. And so if I'm not experiencing this, why have I created that experience for myself? And mm-hmm. it was like, just like this yeah. <laughs> moment of like, wow, I've been looking at this all wrong. I know. Um, and like, I, we had this conversation when I was in my like low, you know, period of, of this growth cycle. And we said the exact same thing. Like, let me make the money and like get the clients and the targets here. So then I can have time to do the passion projects in my business. And then we kind of both look at each other like, no, 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 wait a minute. <laughs> Let's bring the passion projects and that excitement and those high vibing emotions, like you said, on a day-to-day basis. And this will bring the results, the clients, the money, the relationship, whatever you're chasing and that you want to attract in your life, you know? Yes. Uh, Um, there's an excellent book that you and I have, have both read called, um, 
the, uh, no, not the surrender experiment, the untethered soul, same author, the untethered soul. And it talks about infinite energy Mm -hmm. because there is literally infinite energy. And the example that he gave, which was brilliant about, you know, if we've ever been through a breakup and let's say we were dumped and, you know, you kind of get down in those lower frequencies, almost a depression, like you let yourself go, you just don't keep up with things. And if they call you a few months later and they're like, I'm so sorry, like I need to get back together how fast would you, would your energy come up? Would you pick up? Would you want to do things that you normally wouldn't? And therefore, you know, we think that we only have this limited amount of energy, but we don't, it's, it's the circumstances that we put ourselves in to be able to harness that Mm -hmm. infinite energy. And that's where inspired action really comes from because we want to feel engaged. Like we want to feel passionate. We want to get ideas and downloads. And that comes from being in alignment And I know like you were just recognizing this. It's been a huge journey for myself over the past year of trusting the good feelings of Mm -hmm. leaning into what feels good. Like, oh, like I can feel good and really get what I want, or Mm -hmm. I can like struggle and suffer through it and like hope that I get what I want. Like it's two completely different states. Yeah, for sure. And I love, like we talked about, I think last week was like the next moment you just do it because it brings you joy and fun, not because it's going to get you to where you want to go. And for me, I was always like a very goal oriented person. Like we talked about in part one. So I was like, okay, here's the goal. Here's the game plan. Here's the path. And like, no matter what, I'm going to do the steps to get there. Even if that means that I burn out, I don't listen to myself and I fall like out of alignment. But in the last six months to a year, I was like, wow, I set the wrong targets now because clearly not only do I fall out of alignment, but I don't even reach that target anymore. So I had to like go back and change my procedure and just like go, okay, I I trust the fun. I trust the joy. I trust that I'm feeling good. And everything's just been flowing for me in the past few weeks, you know, just a little mindset. Yeah. Yeah. Mindset shift. I love what you just said there. Let's break that down to like practicality. Cause I know like there might, might be someone listening here and even in, 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 when you're in it, like, let's look like back when those two weeks of like low. And even I remember saying to you, like you're out of alignment, like you need to change and you're like, okay, but like, what the F does that mean? And like, how do I do it? And like, how do I yeah. loosen the, the strangulation that I'm giving myself with fear? And so yeah. if there's someone listening here who maybe they're recognizing they're out of alignment and especially maybe with their business, cause that's mm-hmm. can, can bring up a lot of scarcity. What were some of those first steps or even like uh, thought processes or maybe the nothingness, like what did you do to like start pulling yourself up out of that? Cause it's not just a snap of the fingers and it's gone. Mm-hmm. There's, there's a process there. Yeah. Um, the first thing that I did during these two weeks was to surrender and step out of it. So every day I was like, okay, I'm going to do more for this launch and for that program and all that. So I think it was on the Friday after like burning myself out and being like very emotional and like not getting the results or the feelings that I wanted to get on the Friday, I had planned to work all weekend and do more because, you know, the launch was finishing my marketing blitz, like, I think like the the next Friday. And that was so uncomfortable. I was like, no, you're going to step away from the business for the whole weekend. So Friday I canceled everything. I like scratched my to-do list. I was like, I'm just going to be, I think I went skating. I had a couple of conversations with some close friends at night. I went to have sushi with my best friend. I was like, let's just change my state, just do something, have fun. I saw my nephew and then Saturday as well. And then Sunday I was like, oh wow, now I feel inspired. I actually want to work on this launch. I'm actually getting ideas. I'm actually like, I want to create new posts and I want to market it differently this week. So for me, it was just like a day and a half of like letting go. And that's uncomfortable because we're supposed to like, no, it's not working. Do more. Yeah. So that's the first advice or like tip that I would give because like we're so in it, just step away from it, do something that fuels your heart, it's going to change your state. And then look at that, you'll get the inspiration that you need. Yeah. Um, yeah. So that's space. Like we talked about last time. Yeah. Yeah. And that can be sometimes so hard to take for ourselves. Uh, mm-hmm. cause we think, well, if I give space then I'm getting behind, but are you yeah. really ahead? Like that, that's, exactly. that, that's like, am I really ahead of like where I want to be? No, I'm actually like far off track. So yeah. let's, let's stop. And, and that really what that does is like that neutralizes energies, right? Mm-hmm. Like step away, focus on things that are fun. It clears your head. Cause when we get into a situation that we don't like, or we're recognizing that things are off, 
it can be a spin. It can be a spin mm-hmm. in our mind. And you can sometimes end up creating more anxiety, more stress, whereas just backing off, like just over 24 hours, not even 48 hours, mm-hmm. you start to feel better. Yeah. Um, but it's, it's looking at like, we just don't give ourselves that space. Mm-hmm. Yes. 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 The other thing that I did, and that's not just recently, but I've been doing that since last June. So like eight months ish, um, in June, after one of our mastermind uh, meetups, I started to, I took two weeks and I started to question absolutely everything that I was doing in my life. It takes time and energy, but, uh, the awareness and like the shifts and the, now the decisions that I was able to make after was like mind blowing. So little things like why do I meditate every morning? Is it because it's a habit? I've been doing it for years. Is it because I really want to do it and it makes a positive difference in my day? Or is it because I read a book about personal development that told me that it was important to meditate? So I did that with everything in my life, nutrition, training, um, how I want to live, you know, my future projects, like relationships, the little habits and the big things. And just like opening up the awareness to like a different possibility, to me anyway, it brought a lot more permission and flexibility to like, oh, I can ask myself this morning when I wake up, what do I feel like doing as a morning routine? Maybe I want to meditate because yes, I do love the positive effect of starting my day with meditation, but do I have to do it with this specific guided YouTube channel in my bed or can I do it outside staring at the sun or can I do it in my living room with my cat, you know, on me? So it, That to me proved that stepping away from being so like structured and rigid in my business, doing that in different areas of my life, again, it just proved to me that, oh, I can listen to myself and I feel good because I've listened to what I feel like doing in that moment and not what I usually do or like what I should be doing. Yeah. So it's been a work in progress for sure, but bringing that flexibility and like asking myself what I feel like doing on these little things then I can start to apply it in my business, which is what I've been doing now in the past few weeks. Like, what do I feel like doing in my business and not what I've been doing for five plus years or what I should be doing because it looks good on paper and it will help me reach my income targets, you know? So yes. yeah, that's a good and exercise. This is, this is really harnessing that, that feminine energy. You know, um, women, you know, vagina owners here, <laughs> like we, we usually have more of that feminine essence as opposed to the masculine, but in business. And I know Claudia, you have been right there as well, where you rely so much on logic of the thinking yeah. of the structure of the rigidityness. And I, I, yeah. I believe it, it, it's very valuable to have a container of structure, but when it's so rigid that you are not even having fun, you're not even questioning, do I really want to do this? And you're just mm-hmm. doing it because logically it sounds good. That completely yeah. takes us out of our feminine mm-hmm. energy where we're not in our bodies. We're not feeling, we're not leaning into the moment. We're not following mm-hmm. fun and joy which is what the feminine essence is all about. And I think a lot of people think that the feminine essence is maybe uh, it's weaker. It's not as productive. It's at least that these were my views before of like, Oh, I don't want to fall into my feminine. Cause then mm-hmm. I lose grip of like the yeah, structure and how sure. I know how to get results. But oh, when yeah. you loosen that and you soften and you feel into the moment, you actually enjoy your life and you have fun and you do things that bring you inspiration from that mm-hmm. obviously inspired action. Yeah. And everything feels easier. So then when you do step into that deep work, like productive, like divine masculine energy, you're so much more productive and it fuels you. It doesn't drain you when you have that balance. Yes. Yeah. You also resisted some, I'm not going to say resisted, maybe just didn't know how to move into more feminine energy. And it's been a conversation for a long time. And you're kind of questioned like, am I doing it? Am I not doing it? And I believe it was last fall with your launch, you, there was some like trial and error with yeah. all of that. So do you want to chat about just bringing more of your sure. feminine essence into your business and, and what that oh, was yeah. like? Uh, and I for sure resisted it. We can definitely use that word <laughs> because again, for me, I saw being in my feminine as lazy. I'm going to say it like for me, I was like, I'm going to be lazy if I'm, at, if I'm, if I'm in that energy. So Last fall, I was doing, I, again, I usually do like a five-day free challenge before launching my paid, you know, six or 12-week challenge. And we had a lot of conversations and it was all about 
not setting like numbers in terms of targets, but like setting like feelings. So like at the end of like that five day, how do you want to feel when you do like your Facebook lives or whatever? How do you want to feel? And even like promoting it, I think you told me like, don't do anything if you're not feeling good. So if you're doing something just because your marketing schedule for this challenge, I ended up doing a retreat and I'll talk about that after, um, just because you're supposed to post like a social proof kind of post on Monday morning, like don't do it. Just post when you feel like sharing something. So I decided to do a three-day uh, virtual retreat. Um, usually it's more about like training nutrition and you're like, no, let's talk about like recovery, which again is more like the feminine, right? So just like the content of this challenge that became a retreat, again, just a change of words, that was new for me to put that forward. And I remember during the marketing blitz, I went into another growth cycle, like dark night of the soul. That was probably my heaviest one or my deepest one, however you want to see it. Last year, I was in bed for like four or five days, just like depressed, writing, crying, you know, and, and it was great. What came out of it was great. I was like, how am I going to market this? And again, the, the talk and the shoulds. And I was like, you know what? That's it. We're doing a recovery retreat. Clearly, I need this as well. So I showed up on stories with like my eyes looked like I had been crying for days because I had been crying for days and just like talking from the heart, like vulnerable and like, hey, ladies, come on in, you know, we're going to do this. So anyway, so just the way I was like, my messaging was so authentic to me. So it just like, I got the results and I finished a three day and I'm usually drained after I do these uh, free uh, challenges because they're like hundreds of women. There's a lot of messaging back and forth. Like I give like an hour of my time live every day. I finished the three days and I went on a two hour walk because I had so much energy. So I was like, wow, like that fueled me this week. It didn't drain my energy because I was flowing through it. I was not doing things because I should be doing it. Um, and then I stepped into like really divine, productive, masculine energy. Like Joel lit like a fire under my ass that week. And I'm like, okay, cool. Like your retreat is done. Now you have targets and this is like your paid launch. And that week just felt like I was on a high all week, you know, but I wasn't burnt out at the end. I was still energized. And it was cool to see the contrast between let's be in the feminine for the retreat, which brought like so much impact for all the women who signed up. And then cool, let's dive into that masculine for the actual paid launch. Um, so that was really cool. It was my biggest launch ever, like not drained, not burnt out, had so much fun. And it was the first time I was tapping into that kind of energy. So it works. <laughs> yeah. And, th and then once you feel that energy, it's like you have that home base to come back to. Yeah. And I see like growth and, and, and healing and evolving ourselves and like really this personal transformation. There's so many layers. And you really have to experience one layer in order to create contrast on another. For, so for example, I think mm -hmm. you, for the first time you had like a super aligned launch that felt great. That was last fall. Mm -hmm. Went into launch again, but the product was not aligned. So the marketing could not come out aligned either. And so it's now it's the recognition of like, okay, like there's some structural stuff in my business that needs to change because mm -hmm. sometimes like the offer is fine and there's, it just has to be a different, um, more aligned way of positioning a message or the mm -hmm. way you show up in it. Then other yeah. times it's like, I'm, I am not aligned with the structure, with the offers, mm -hmm. with what, how I'm showing up in the business and everything yeah. needs to change. And so yeah. I changed both for me. Like it was the message and I kind of like found my voice again, like four days before the, the launch, which was cool because it gave me a bit of time to try different like topics and stuff but I redid the whole challenge and now it's 12 week it's like one habit like it's so different now and I'm like really speaking from the heart you know yes. um and it's been it's been fun it's been a, a great challenge so far yes yeah but lots and of lessons so, learned during the launch <laughs> yeah and so you're in this growth cycle now you're recognizing some disalignment you know with your business I know the past two weeks a lot of stuff has been in momentum so What's been happening now that you've, you've recognized the misalignment, you've listened to the misalignment, you've restricted that strangulation of fear from the misalignment, what has been unfolding? <sighs> so much in so little time, but everything has been feeling so easy and like smooth. There's no resistance, like the synchronicities of like people coming at me, asking questions, opportunities, collaborations. Um, I'm working on like putting together an event, found the location in like minutes. 
Um, so yeah, I'm just, again, evolving my services within my business, but from the heart and the intuition. So for five years, the brain was deciding, right? When we map this out, this makes sense. The clients will, like the client renewal, they'll they'll start here and then they can move on to the next challenge or this next level or the one-on-one. And it all made sense on paper and it did bring amazing results. But then like six months ago, misalignment, you know, and like the launches that we talked about. So now I'm just listening more to the heart and the the intuition to kind of, again, like I said, revamp a bit my business and my offers. Um, So bringing more of like new services, like Reiki, energy healing, talking more about like personal development, spirituality, creating events in person, which is something I've done in the past. And for some reason, always put on a hold because I had to work on the online business and just allowing to have fun with these projects. And I think it's the first time in my business that I don't set any targets in terms of like money or like how many clients I want to have within these services. And it's the first time as well that I don't have any expectations on the outcome. So going back to like, this feels fun. This was a cool meeting. This person could be a guest speaker at my event. And it's just the next logical best step because it's fun. And not like, what is the outcome? Um, and you mentioned this and we can wrap up with that, but you were saying, I was, I kept saying, like, I don't want to get ahead of myself. Right. I was like, I'm excited. I have so many ideas, but I don't want to get ahead of myself. And you're like, no, get ahead of yourself. Yeah. Get excited. Yeah. Like this is where the passion comes in and the manifestation unfolds. So again, thank you so much for you being the, the inspiration yeah. for that. But uh, yeah, it's been exciting. Yeah. I find, um, cause that getting ahead of yourself Usually when we're in misalignment, we're still trying to do the same thing again and again, and we get disappointed and we get disappointed. So we don't want to get ahead of ourselves because we don't want the disappointment again, but you're Mm -hmm. in a completely different energy. And so when it feels freaking good, like get ahead of yourself, doesn't mean you have to be in action, but like visualize it, make Mm -hmm. some notes, like journal about it, get ahead, get ahead of your vision. Cause it is that vision that will pull you forward. If you don't have vision pulling you forward, you're just looking down at what's happening right now. And you don't know where you're going. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, wonderful. I'm so excited with where you're at. Um, On part three, when we come back, Claudia, are going to have some really practical examples? We're taking a a week break between this episode and we're going to come back with some calibrating moments because when you are in uh, growth cycles, it's the day-to-day stuff, right? Right now we're having conversations. People are getting a lot of value, but like what happens when you're in the day-to-day, when you have to Mm -hmm. recognize the old version of yourself versus the new version of yourself, the, the, the right, you know, moves to make for you. So we're going to come back with some stories uh, over the next week because we are calibrating every day, (laughs) every hour at this point. And we want to give you some real life practical examples of what that looks like to, to grow and calibrate every day. Yeah. Awesome. Wonderful. We'll see you on the next episode. Yes. Thank you for joining me on this episode today. My website, simplysara.com is a great place for me to continue to support you on your journey to alignment, joy, and fulfillment. There you will find upcoming retreats that I am hosting, resources, books, and many other helpful tools to help you on your travels through this thing called life.